that. But there are those who have real legitimate concerns about immigration, uh, globalization, innovation, and what does that mean for their job and their family's future? And we have to address those concerns. And Joe Biden is doing that. Created nine million jobs in his term in office. Donald Trump has the worst record of job loss of any president. So we just have to make sure people know. That was a global pandemic. He had the worst record of any president. We've had other concerns in our country. If you want to be an apologist for Donald Trump, that, that may be your role, but it ain't mine. Well, there you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You guys ought to know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Por favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay. Party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, folks, what are we talking about today, folks? Man, oh, man. Now, we know that Nancy Pelosi is not a great orator. She's, uh, truth be told, she's kind of a drunk. Okay. You know, everybody sees it. Whenever she's on air, she slows her, she slurs her words. She's, uh, eh, she's like an airhead, you know? And because of her later years and all she done, it is what it is, all right? So the other day, she was in England at a debate forum, the Oxford Union over here. This is something big. This is a big thing up in, um, across the pond. You know they love the debates over there. And they invited Nancy Pelosi over there. So... She went, and it was about populism. And let's take a listen to the great orator, Nancy Pelosi, making her case. Go. The fact is that using ethno, whether it's people different from me, nationalism, populism, is a very dangerous threat to democracy, not just in America, where we're seeing it play out, but in the whole world in the context of a fight between democracy and autocracy, our, our, not our, not mine, but the version of populism, ethno-nationalist populism, which tries to bring down education and fake news, the, the media, which is a protector of democracy, that version is contributing in countries other than our country, and is a danger to democracy. Nancy Pelosi will be known forever as the greatest Speaker of the House in American history. Yep, that's Nancy Pelosi over there for you. She's uh, making a case about populism. And again, you see how she slurs her words. She smells like vodka or something. I don't know what's her problem. She's on heads meds. She just loopsy. And this went on for about eight minutes and nobody knows what the hell she's talking about. She just, blah, blah, blah. and you know how she talks with her hands is never in rhythm. It's very bad, very bad. But anyway, her opponent at this debate is called uh, Mr. Winston Marshall from the Brit. And he's done the rebuttal. Now, I'm going to give you some fair warnings. He ate her lunch. But if you don't believe me, let's take a listen to Winston Marshall on the rebuttal. Before COVID, intelligence services colluded with big tech to have Trump suspended off Twitter. Yes, the same platform which hosted the Taliban and Ayatollah deaf to Israel Khomeini, they thought the president crossed the line when he tweeted on Jan 6th, quote, remain peaceful, no violence, Respect the law and our great men and women in blue. That's a quote. 
You may be thinking now that Trump is a populist. You are right. He didn't accept the 2020 elections, and he should have. So should Hillary in 2016, so should Brussels, and so should Westminster in 2016, and so too should Congresswoman Pelosi, instead of saying the 2016 election was, quote, hijacked. Quote, hijacked. Thank you. Hey, you see, Nancy Pelosi had to interrupt, you know, being unruly. When she was speaking, nobody interrupted her. But of course, she's an American Democrat. So that's her. Let's go. What about the mainstream media? Let me read you some mainstream media headlines. The New Yorker the day before the 2016 election. The case against democracy. The Washington Post the day after the election. The problem with our government is democracy. The LA Times, June 2017. The British election is a reminder of the perils of too much democracy. Vox, June 2017. The two eminent political scientists say the problem with democracy is voters. New York Times, June 2017. The problem with participatory democracy is the participants. Mainstream media elites are part of a class who don't just disdain populism, they disdain the people. If the Democrats had put half their energy into delivering for the people, Trump wouldn't even have a chance in 2024. He shouldn't, he shouldn't have a chance. You've had power for four years. From the fabricated steel dossier to trying to take him off the ballot in both Maine and Colorado, the Democrats are the anti-Democrat party. All we need now is the Republicans to come out as the pro-monarchist party. Damn. Before going any further, I have to say fair use. Okay, I got to break this up. I can't let it run all the way through because you know who is going to give me a strike. But fair use, and let's hear some more. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, populism is not a threat to democracy, but I'll tell you what is. It's elites ordering social media to censor political opponents. It's police shutting down dissenters, be it anti-monarchists in this country or gender-critical voices here. Or last week in Brussels, the National Conservative uh, Movement. I'll tell you what is a threat to democracy. It's Brussels, D.C., Westminster, the mainstream media, big tech, big pharma, corporate collusion and the Davos cronies. The threat to democracy comes from those who write off ordinary people as deplorable. The threat to democracy comes from those who smear working people as racists. The threat to democracy comes from those who write off working people as populists. And I'll say one last thing. This populist age can be brought to an end at the snap of a finger. All that needs to be done is for elites to start listening to, respect it, respecting, and, God forbid, working for ordinary people. Thank you. Man, I wish I could give Mr. Winston Marshall a standing ovation. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. And I'm surprised that Nancy Pelosi showed up for this. Like, as if <laughs> though she had anything to stand on. She got to be drunk. She has to be drunk. There's no excuse for her to come in unprepared. You know, this is a seasoned politician, and she can't make a case for populism. And the young dude ate her lunch up. Man, shout out to you, Winston Marshall. I wish we had more um, orators in America who speak just like that, you know, who makes clear cases and calm, measured, and straight to the point without hedging. That was a good, that was very good, very good. And I'm very glad that Nancy Pelosi, uh, you got your butt kicked. 
If you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. See that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends. And tell your mama I said hi. All right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you liberals, get your ass off home.